Okay, here we are. Episode 11, Overland Journal, and we are in Moab, Utah. Beautiful Moab. And there's a funny story that goes along with this, and this is going to be an unusual video because circumstances dictated that I should make this video. So I am. Now, I've been in Utah, Moab, Utah, specifically, a dozen times easy. But this time, in six days of being in Utah, I saw three different vehicles flip over and four different vehicles burn to the ground. And that prompted me to make this particular video. Because what I'm going to tell you in this video could save your life or save the life of your family. Or while you're waiting for search and rescue, it'll make your life that much easier. So you're going to want to sit back you're going to want to relax, and you're going to want to check this out. So before we start, let me remind you of something I said in a previous Overland Journal video. My first 10 miles in the truck since it sat all night and it rained last night so it cooled up a lot. Every time I come to Utah, I bring precipitation. I know it's, it sounds stupid or funny or whatever, but every time I come to Utah, it rains and someone notices it. It's strange, whatever. Cool. The rainmaker. So that was 35 days ago. Let's fast forward till this week in Moab. So I just got to Moab an hour ago and this is happening. I was not kidding, I wasn't exaggerating. It is raining like a mofo and windy as F. Every time I show up out here, I bring bad weather with me, one way or the other. It's a weird thing. So there you go. I wasn't kidding. For whatever reason, every time I show up in the desert, for some reason, rain, hail, or snow follows with me. But then it passes. But it was just a strange thing, and I wanted to point that out. Now, on to the point of this particular video. So, as Overlander, off-road, or survival-minded people, or enthusiasts, whatever you want to call it, we purposefully find ourselves in places where no one else is around. We purposefully go to places that are absolutely off the beaten track. And it's awesome. It's awesome. But many, 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 many times you'll find yourself completely and utterly alone. No signal because of canyon walls or because of your location and you are totally dependent on no one else but you and lots of us have taken lots of time throughout our lives to learn how to survive in bad situations on our own whether it be 10 miles out into the middle of a mount, uh, desert canyon like where I'm at right now or the top of a mountain, out in the middle of the forest, the woods, wherever. But here's one thing you can never plan for, and that is a rollover, a catastrophe, or a vehicle fire. And man, I've been in Moab for less than a week, and I've already seen six different vehicles, for whatever reason, that have burned to the ground, giving the driver 
seconds to jump out. The beauty of an Overland vehicle is we have pretty much everything you might need on it to get where you're going, fix your vehicle, fill yourself with gas, etc. But the downside to that is if you've got a vehicle fire or a flip over that causes a fire, you've got CO2, you've got propane, you've got gasoline, the vehicles burn so quick, you've only got time to grab one thing and run. And I'm gonna show you what that one thing should be. And I'm gonna show you how to build it yourself. So here we go. So ironically, while on my while on my way to the location to actually film this, I almost get run off of a cliff wall at Gemini Bridges by some jerk off in a tundra. And that would have put me exactly in the situation that this entire video is about. It's funny how life works. So see this corner right here and the skid marks? That's because some asshole with his son in the car just came flying up Gen Gemini Bridges. Unbelievable, man. With a fucking kid in the car. Unreal. Absolutely unreal. I, I cannot believe that dude didn't just hit me or go off that cliff. And it's so unbelievably ironic because I'm making a video on exactly that topic right now. That's why I'm here. Unbelievable, man. Wow. Okay, so we all saw what happens when you go off-road. Things can go horribly wrong. And that's what brings me back to the one thing you should carry in your vehicle, whether you're out exploring nature, out doing hardcore trails, out overlanding for several days, or you just want to be prepared for the absolutely inevitable. Period. That's where this comes into play. I, I carry this with me at all times. It's right next to my driver's seat. If anything goes wrong, and with this small pack, very small pack, I stand a phenomenal chance of making it one, two, three, four nights if I have to. And I'm so much more comfortable than just simply having a cell phone or nothing at all. This pack covers a wide gamut. And I'm going to show you what's in mine, what I use it for, and why you should make yourself one as soon as humanly possible. And I'll also leave a list below for every item in this pouch, including this pouch, so you can find it on your own. You can't ask for better than that. You can if you want, but you're not gonna get it. So there, as they say, is that. To, to start with, this is a Max, Maxpedition Fatty Organizer. You can use a VanQuest, you can use any number of, the, of pouches that are available out there. But I stick with Mystery Ranch, Kafaru, Maxpedition, or VanQuest. I am not one of those channels that is talking about budget gear. If you're gonna take your vehicle and pack it up and head out into remote places where there's literally signs saying, this is a remote location, search and rescue may be delayed by a long time. I don't want the budget shit. I don't do that, not on this channel. Everything that I have is either made in America, made in Japan, or made in Australia, and it's the best that I can afford. Because if your ass is on the line, and you go grab your you know, made in Korea Paxpedition back uh, fatty pouch. When you go to grab it, chances are the handle's gonna come off. But on that, I will digress. Okay, so the Maxpedition pouch has a handle, it has a big ass zipper, it's got a stretchy Velcro mesh pouch in the front, and it's got Molly strips in the back. In the front of mine, I keep an SE laser strike made in America at night, right in the front. I don't have any clip-ons. I do have a little 550 cord with a little tensioner on it, but I don't want this getting hung up in the Maxpedition pouch when I draw it out. So that's the number one thing that's on the outside. And then a chem stick, and I always make sure the chem stick is current, meaning it's within the uh, expiration date, which is usually like 2,000 years. That's also, in the front of this particular pouch, which I will leave a list where you can get everything in the description below. So you can just basically order everything that you need at one spot and have it here in a couple of days. 
I carry Ben's wipes. These are for mosquitoes, black flies, chiggers, ticks, fleas, etc. I carry one of these in my wallet. I carry one of these in my back pocket. And I carry them in any bag that I own, period. These things kick ass. And that is that. I also carry a package of Ivy Cleanse towelettes, okay? You just had a rollover. You just had an accident. The high lift jack just broke your arm, wrist, or jaw. The last thing you want to do is while you're bleeding and crying and freaking out is stumbling into poison oak, ivy, or sumac and not having something to quell it a little bit. This stuff is worth its weight in gold. And you should have some. Also, in the front, right here. Man, that's tough to get out. This is a real, a real hypothermia emergency blanket. This isn't one of those shitty ones from REI. This is a real one made in Sweden. This will open up large enough to cover my ample frame completely all the way around because in the desert, it's 120 degrees all day. At a mountaintop, it can be 90 degrees all day. As soon as the sun goes behind a mountain face, the temperature drops by 40 to 50 to 60, sometimes 70 degrees. If you don't have one of these, you're gonna be effed directly in your A. Let's open this up and I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the inside. This will save your entire life and the life of somebody else. Or if it takes search and rescue one, two or three days, or it takes the off-road a tow truck guy one, two or three days to get there, Having this in your cargo pocket, having this in your pocketbook, having this in your hand will make that weight exponentially easier than it would have been without this gear. Right off the rip, you're gonna notice that I have an ITS Tactical EDC Trauma Kit. This kit has quick clot inside, it has a soft, soft TW tourniquet, and it has a pair of gloves. It's very basic but it's enough to stop bleeding if you did get a head injury or any place else on your body. You've got a tourniquet and you've got a quick clot inside here, inside here. Last time I showed you this pouch, this wasn't in here. This is a new addition. No offense to M3 Outfitters, I love those guys, but this fits in here better. I also carry a large Made in America nail clipper. These things do a million different things. They can pull out a splinter, they can pull out a wooden splinter, they can pull out a stinger, or they can cut your nails. Having your nails effed up in a bad situation is a bad situation. Your goal is to make your bad situation a better situation, not a worse situation. Having nail clippers is everything. Ask me how I know. I also have attached in here to the little key fob, I have a compass with an emergency whistle with the magnifying glass on it and a thermometer because it's good to know these few things even though you're in an emergency situation straight up okay now I carry come on dude I carry a Strider SMF at all times but the vehicle just went over, or the vehicle caught on fire, or the vehicle went over and caught on fire. Maybe my pocket knife got thrown. I carry an Emerson Wave pocket knife at all times. It's made by Zero Tolerance and Emerson. It's a collaboration knife. It's a liner lock. This stays inside my bag at all times. So already, I have two knives inside my bag. I also keep a small multi-tool screwdrivers very very fine screwdrivers this also does torques etc this is good for a variety of things but mostly it's good for keeping my eyeglasses in check and keeping things like this in check it's just good to have a working thick lighter at all times a small tube of infection guard in case you've got a cut, you can spray this down. You can throw the quick clot on it out of the EDC trauma kit, and you're good to go. 
I carry one, two, three titanium tent spikes that work in conjunction with this because I can make an emergency shelter with this and really actually fasten it to the ground. I carry a really decent quality knife sharpener. This also kept, this also sharpens my uh, serrations, even though I don't have them on either one of the knives. But if I did, I can sharpen them with this little, gad, little bad boy right there. I carry this, I forget who makes this, but this is an insanely sharp straight razor. Insanely. Skinning a squirrel, skinning a kangaroo rat, skinning a field mouse, skinning an owl, if you had to. I would hate to do that, but food is way down on my list. Water, shelter, and warmth are way up on my list, and hope. Okay, chapstick. Doesn't have to be from Moab, but this is made in Moab with special Moab herbs and spices. No, it's not. It's regular old chapstick with a Moab thing. This is good to have for so many reasons. Ferrisium rod and magnesium from a company called Tops that makes top knives with a whistle and a can opener all in one thing. And this can opener can act as a striker, which is very, very helpful. The next thing is an epinephrine pen. Uh, pen. Perhaps you stumbled on, stumbled on a bunch of ground hornets or a spider bit you. This will help with an allergic reaction. These are expensive. These are very difficult to get. I carry these at all times. I've never actually needed them because I'm not allergic to anything. But just today, today alone, I helped two lesbian off-road dual purpose motorcycle women who bought the motorcycles and didn't realize you need to know how to use them in Moab and crashed. I helped one of them and then the other guy almost ran me off the road. But my first aid gear has always gone to somebody else. I carry one, two, three sets of first aid in the truck and I'm not exactly certain if I've ever needed it for myself. It's always good to have it for somebody else. As much of a dick I, as I am when you first meet me, for the most part, if you're injured or you're in need, I got your back. Moving on. I don't love these whatsoever at all, but it's a life straw. If you can find some place to find water, the life straw technically will get you through one, two, three days. And that's what we're looking for. This is basically for overnight if possible. We've also got the Bear Grillis made by Gerber Firestarter. And when someone first gave me this, I laughed at them because being a judgmental prick, I'm like, Bear Grillis, that's the stupidest. Th this is the best ferrocium rod striker combination I've ever seen, ever. I've given these to family and friends, straight up. I laughed at it at first, discovered I was wrong, ate a little crow, and I moved on. It also allows you to store fire starter right in the stem of it. I'm not even kidding, $16 on Amazon or REI or whatever, this Bear Gorillas fire starter is no joke at all. Usually didn't trust people on the Discovery Channel, but it's funny how that all comes around. A high quality diamond saw. Two rings, cut down a branch, make a fire. Don't buy a cheap one, I'll leave links for a good one. This one I've used numerous times. I keep it in the bag so the humidity doesn't make it rust up, but these are very good to have. And they fit in the pouch. Man. Okay. Telescoping straw to stoke your fire. These are really good to have for a lot of reasons. And it also works as a long straw to get water out of crevices in little places. Like, you know, if you find yourself in the desert, this is great for stoking a fire, but it's also great for getting to water that you couldn't reach otherwise. Keep that in mind. This gives you a full two foot where you could reach into a crack, like up in those pieces of uh, redstone right there. And you could get yourself a drink where normally only small rodents and such could reach. Now you can reach, okay. Zip ties or wire ties, as many as you got, as many as you can carry. It's amazing the different uses you can find for a zip tie, even when you're in the middle of nowhere. A marine flare, 
all hell breaks loose, you're out in the middle of no place and all of a sudden it rains like you read about, everything's soaking wet, this will help you get a fire started when all other methods fail. I've carried this for years, I've never had to use it, but I still got it. I think about 100 feet of Kevlar string, 450 pound, foot pound breaking force, and then some regular old 550 cord. Actually, this isn't 550 cord, this is bank line. Something to tie things down with, that's all you care about. A small Altoids container I've carried for years with a variety of different fire starting tidbits in here. That's the volcano thing, that's my favorite. Anything that can help you start a fire is A-OK -okay with me. Magnesium rod with ferrocium on the side. Make sure you don't buy the Hencho in China ones that don't work whatsoever at all. This is not one of them. This works, this. You take the back of your knife, you make this, this block into a powder and you literally have thermite and it will burn through everything. So there, as they say, is that. Tick removing tweezers. Good to have in most parts of the United States. These are very, very good to have. Duct tape. Uh, of course, the Gorilla Tape is melted to the bag, right? Duct tape, Gorilla Tape, as much as you think you would ever need. I carry about 20 feet of each. Fishing line with fishing hooks wrapped up inside. Not a ton, and fishing leaders. These fishing leaders can be used for fishing or they can also be used to make a small snare for animals. If your one, two or three days gets worse and you end up out there for six days and you're eating squirrels, that'll help you catch them. Okay, so that basically concludes the inside of the fatty organizer, except this pouch and then in the back, there's a zippered pouch. Now I've already showed you the ITS tactical EDC trauma kit that I inserted inside the fatty pack. But we've also got pyro pack from an MRE kit that this is, this is gel that will light on fire that comes with your meals ready to eat. This stuff is no joke. And I'm glad I just pulled it out because it's perforated. But fortunately I keep everything double sealed. This will start a fire on running water. And then I carry Quick Clock Sport, more Blood Stopper. Um, what do we've got in here? Band-Aids, blisters, burn gel, etc. Things that you would think you would need if you couldn't get to your medicine cabinet. It's not rocket science and it would vary from person to person. Same with this. Again, burn gel, iodine, Band-Aids of all sizes, things you would need, blah, blah, blah. Now, I carry a lot of this, a lot meaning 16, Imodium AD. Let's say you use the life straw, and as I've discovered in the past, the life straw doesn't do its job, and you end up pooping water. In a survival situation, you do not want water coming out of your bum because that will cause you to become very, very dehydrated. That's where Imodium AD comes into play. It stops, it keeps everything in check. It throws a plug in the old, you know what I'm saying. You don't want to And some more fire starter. So that, as well as an SOL two person blanket to work with the Swedish emergency blanket. That, the bank line, and these three, I can make a shelter to keep the wind and the water off of me. And I can also wrap myself in a heat reflecting blanket, which is something you would need because the temperature differ, it might not, it might be 50 degrees at night, but if it was 110 all day, you were gonna be freezing your ass off. The reason I'm making this video is because in six days, I've seen eight cars, Jeeps, 
razors burned to the ground, vehicles flooded, completely knocked out of commission, or flipped over. And anyway, it's Richie from Jailbreak. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like, share, and subscribe. YouTube sadly has decided to shadow ban me because of other channels I have. So every share and every like helps. But if you don't, it doesn't matter. At any rate, the entire list of everything that you see here and saw in this video will be linked below. You can click on it, make it, make your purchase at one time, or pick and choose, but do yourself a solid. Budget is great for patio furniture. Budget is not great for vehicle equipment, winches, tires, suspension, and things that might save your life. Ask how I know. At any rate, I am out. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like, share, and subscribe. Links will be below for everything you just saw in this video. If you don't have one of these bags or a reasonable facsimile, you may want to make one or not. I'm out.